The ultimate demonstration of commitment to an ideal is for one to die in persecution for that belief. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a German theologian who left the safety of America during World War II to minister to those Christians who were left behind in Nazi Germany. He was arrested in 1943. He was held in concentration camps and prisons for two years until he was hanged in 1945, 23 days before the surrender of Germany, for sabotage and conspiracy against Hitler and the Nazis. Now, during his imprisonment, he made an impact on everyone he came in contact with. One guard even went as far to smuggle his writings out of prison so that they could be preserved for future generations. His recent popularity can be credited to this biography by Eric Metaxas, titled Bonhoeffer, and another popular book inspired by discipleship is called The Cost of Discipleship. But today we're reviewing the fourth volume of Discipleship by Bonhoeffer. Now Bonhoeffer divides this book into two different sections. The first section involves grace and discipleship, the Sermon on the Mount, and a call to obedience of Christ's disciples. The second section is more ecclesial in its approach. This section handles the disciple in everyday church discussing things like baptism and the community of believers. Within the first couple of pages of this first section, I knew that it was going to be a, a challenging and spiritually deep read. And he reads, Cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance, baptism without church discipline, communion without confession, absolution without personal confession. Cheap grace is grace without discipleship, grace without the cross, and grace without Jesus Christ. Bonhoeffer goes on to define costly grace as the treasure hidden in the field. For the sake of it, man will gladly go and sell all he has. It is the pearl of a great price to buy, which the merchant will sell all his goods for. It is the call of Jesus Christ at which the disciple leaves his nets and follows him. Bonhoeffer describes such grace as costly because it calls us to follow. And that is grace because it calls us to follow Jesus Christ. It's costly because it cost God the life of His Son. And it's grace because God did not reckon His Son too dear of a price to pay for our life. But He gave Him up for us. And Bonhoeffer points out what, uh, that we have made grace into something that is meaningless. You know, Bonhoeffer suggests it is costly because it costs Jesus his life, like we said, and it is grace because it gives a man the only true life, like we said. And the fact is that Christ lived a perfect life, and he was hated and hung on a cross for our sins. In return, we still try to justify our actions by saying that well, Christ will forgive us. Bonhoeffer is trying to communicate that we are cheapening the sacrifice. Christ made for us the ultimate sacrifice, and Bonhoeffer earnestly calls us to fight this cheap grace because it doesn't lead to salvation. Bonhoeffer also introduces the idea that Jesus died for the justification of the sinner, not to justify the sin. This idea is thoroughly embedded throughout his entire book. In the later chapters, he shows that we can even go so far as to hold the viewpoint that Jesus died for our sins, so we might as well sin and ask for forgiveness. Bonhoeffer dismisses this very quickly, and uh, it shows that this isn't what the Bible preaches. In Bonhoeffer's next point, he introduces another idea that is woven throughout the book. And he says, only he who believes is obedient, and only he who, obedient, who is obedient believes. Now Bonhoeffer suggests that faith is only real when there is real obedience, never without it. And faith only becomes faith in the act of obedience. Belief and obedience are two things that are unified 
and essential to our Christian walk. I also believe that this is something that we have lost sight of today in our churches. We either spend too much time trying to justify the sin away so the sinner won't feel bad, or we feel that by doing good works we can work our way into heaven. Now by separating the unity of belief and obedience, we lose sight of the relationship Christ longs to have with us. Now next, Bonhoeffer looks at each portion of the Sermon on the Mount, as is, it is uh, recorded in Matthew 5-7. through 7. Bonhoeffer, he doesn't simply look at the, the meaning of the text, but he explains it in a way that makes it applicable to the, the, the disciples in their everyday lives. One idea that he introduces here is that it is Jesus himself who comes between the disciples and the law. Not the law, which becomes between Jesus and the disciples. Now, all throughout Jesus' ministry, he was constantly battling the Pharisees and other religious symbols towards this issue. Jesus is trying to get the point across to his followers that humanity has corrupted what God intended law to be. He shows his followers that they, they're free from the law, but requires devotion to the law of, to the law of God, which is the perfect law. Now in the second section, Bonhoeffer articulates that sharing the gospel can be very costly, and we need to be prepared to give our lives in, if needed in this cause. In Jesus' ministry, he is constantly giving of himself, and he is completely selfless. Even in his death, he ministers to the thief on the cross. He does this so that people might know him and the salvation that he brings. He calls us, as his disciples, to show the same selflessness and pure-heartedness towards the unsaved people. We are called to do this in hopes that they might know the salvation that Christ brings. Now Bonhoeffer ends his book with a chapter on man being made in the image of Christ. In this chapter he says that we are made in God's image and because of Adam and the fall of man we were separated from this image. Bonhoeffer leaves us with the hope of Jesus Christ saying we cannot transform ourselves into his image. It is rather the form of Christ which seeks to be formed in us. So he points out that God earnestly seeks us out and attempts to make us in the new image of God, which is in Jesus Christ. Now this book is by far one of the most challenging, bo challenging books I've read in a while. Not only was the book full of theology, it challenged my relationship with God as I was reading it. Bonhoeffer's explanation of grace, obedience, faith, and works, and how they are unified and coexist was really challenging. I've heard many sermons that have quoted Bonhoeffer, as I'm sure you have as well, and it was enlightening to be able to, to put together his theologies in contrast to the quotations that I've heard from him. Now, in saying this, his explanation of grace, obedience, faith, and works were tremendous. I have to say that at times he was very repetitive. Some of his thoughts were very well articulated the first time he mentioned them, but I feel he almost beats them into the ground in some section, repeating them over and over again. Now, there were also two theologies that Bonhoeffer mentioned that I really can't subscribe to. Now, the first one is where he mentions the ultimate purpose of God, which is to establish a holy community, is the last fulfilled in the body of Christ. Now, I do believe that God does want us to create this holy community that Bonhoeffer speaks of, but is it the ultimate purpose of God? I would have to say that making his name famous is the ultimate purpose of God. If this life is not about glorifying God, we have made this life about us rather than making it about God. Now, secondly is his theology on baptism. Bonhoeffer is a Lutheran, and his Lutheran theology is definitely noticeable here. Bonhoeffer suggests that baptism is the mark of a true believer, 
and required for church membership. Now, I argue this because of the thief on the cross. Nowhere does it mention his baptism at all. So I must disagree with the idea that baptism is the mark of a believer. Now, all the same, in conclusion, I feel that Bonhoeffer has provided a completely true depiction of what Christian faith is intended to be. Christ did not die so that we could lead lives filled with cheap grace. Christ died so that we could live lives as Bonhoeffer did. Selfless, willing to die for the call God has on our lives. We need to return to this costly discipleship. The kind of discipleship that Christ has called us to. The kind of discipleship that Christ says makes our relationship with our family look like hate in comparison to our relationship with Him.